In this video, I'm going to be talking to kids about viruses and how to stay healthy. Viruses are a really strange thing because they aren't alive and they aren't exactly dead. They're like a shell that has DNA inside that can reproduce and it connects to and lives off of other healthy cells in our bodies. Viruses come in lots of different shapes. They're all very small and they're named based on their shape. Coronaviruses, which you probably have heard of, look a little like a crown with jeweled points all over them. These viruses are the ones that give you upper respiratory infections, like colds. Why do people consider viruses to be serious? One reason is because we don't have medications that control or kill them. Viruses aren't alive, so they can't be controlled by the types of things that kill bacteria or fungus infections. In the 1940s, a man named Alexander Fleming created antibiotics. They're great against bacteria. He discovered penicillin, which you probably have heard of. Prior to Alexander Fleming's discovery, doctors couldn't do anything about bacteria infections either. If you got a cut, it could be very serious. It's my belief that God has given us the things on this planet we need to stay healthy because he loves us, including a sound mind. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. One of the gifts God gave humanity is a mold called penicillin. That's the one that Alexander Fleming discovered. It kills bacteria and does a great job as an antibiotic for many people. But since viruses aren't alive, the antibiotics don't do anything to them. It may be that God gave us something else that we just haven't discovered yet that will kill viruses, but science is still looking for that answer. So what can we do about viruses? Well, God gave us an amazing immune system. It can fight off viruses if it's given the time to do so. To do its best job though, our immune system needs tools. Things like vitamin C and healthy foods like grapefruit are really good for your immune system. So listen to your parents, take your vitamins, eat healthy, get lots of sleep, and drink your water. Those will help your immune system fight off viruses. So what does the Bible say about scary things like viruses? Well, in 2 Timothy 1.7, it says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. For you and me, this verse means we shouldn't be afraid of things, even if we don't totally understand them. God didn't give us a spirit of fear. He's in charge of things. Secondly, we should love people with compassion. You'll see that all around you. In fact, if you're ever feeling afraid, look around you. There's always helpers. And those helpers are real heroes in this world. You might see them in the form of doctors, nurses, firemen, garbage men, your parents, or even you. In that last part of the verse, it talks about having a sound mind. That means thinking through things logically, using the brain God gave you to make good decisions. So even though you shouldn't be afraid, you should still be smart about your choices. In the case of viruses and sickness, that means washing your hands regularly with lots of soap and running water. It means using hand sanitizer. It also means helping your parents keep things clean, maybe offering to help disinfect things occasionally like light switches or doorknobs. It means being aware of germs and making sure your sneezes and your coughs go maybe into your elbow or better yet, a tissue you can throw away. And in some cases, it may mean you don't get to go play with your friends or visit your grandparents or other people whenever you want to. You may have to stay home so you don't get sick or so you don't get them sick. And that's using a sound mind. How do you know if somebody has a virus and could use help? Well, they might have a cough, a cough that doesn't stop. They also can run a fever, especially if it's over about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's possible that they might have trouble breathing. If any of those things occur, then it's a good idea to let an adult know so that they can find help with you. Let's talk about coughing when you're sick. Why is coughing a bad thing? Check this out. If we put out a white piece of paper on this table, and then I take a little spray bottle and I mix in blue food coloring, we'll be able to see exactly why coughs are so bad. Lots of viruses can only be passed from one person to another through direct physical contact of wet surfaces, like if you cough on your hand or cough directly on somebody. 
That's why it might be important to stay away from other people while you're sick. Here we go. You ready for this cough? Ooh, you can see it all over there, all the little blue dots from pure white to blue, because all of those germs from my cough would have gone all over that surface. And they can go quite a ways, about six feet. So what do you do if you get sick? The good news is God gave us such an amazing body that our immune system, our body, actually can fight off viruses on its own. We need to make sure we're getting water to drink, we need to make sure we're laying low and obeying the instructions of adults around us who care about us. Those things will help you get better because God made our bodies to heal themselves. What else can we do when we're scared? Well, praying is a great idea. We should pray about other people and for their health like our grandparents and parents and siblings and friends. We should also pray for our leaders and ask God to give them wisdom. When we talk to God by praying, we can thank him for great things that are happening, as well as ask him for things like good health. God really wants the best for us as our Heavenly Father. So what does the Bible say about that? In Matthew 6, 25 through 27, the Bible says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet our Heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? God also says in Romans 8.28, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. This means God really does want what's best for people, because we're all His children. You may also need to help out adults, especially your parents. They might worry too much. And if they do, you can help them by being joyful, by being positive, by being a kid. Fun and bubbly and creative. Think of creative things you can do for those around you, especially adults, that'll bring them joy. You as a kid have superpowers. Write adults and those around you nice notes. Draw them nice pictures. Let them know that you love and appreciate them. That goes for your siblings, too. You could also create new games. Use that creativity and go play outside for a while. There's great things you can do, even if other people are worried about getting sick. One thing that might make you feel more comfortable is to think about storm clouds. Storm clouds are really scary when the storm comes, but then it passes and the world is beautiful again. God's always there, even in the storms, and he'll make things beautiful again afterward. So what do you do if you're stuck at home? Well, you could practice an instrument, read a book, play board games with family members, or create whole new games. There's tons of options. Developing good hand-washing habits is really important. One of the most important things is to understand why soap matters. Soap is super important to good hand-washing. So is hot water. Now, water molecules like these, which are those H2O molecules, are what are called polar molecules. That means one side has a slightly positive charge and one side slightly negative. So water molecules like to attach to, well, each other. But then there's lots of things that don't connect to each other. Those things are nonpolar molecules, things like oil. And oil and water don't connect. That means they separate. The oil will move to the top of a container while the water moves to the bottom. I'm going to show you that in a big glass vase. Using this vase, we're going to add water to the bottom and oil on top. This is something you could do at home and some of you probably already have. Here goes our water. Let's put some of that blue food coloring in there. That way you can see it easy. And here comes some vegetable oil. So down below was a polar molecule, and the top is going to be a nonpolar molecule. If I leave it for just a moment, it'll totally separate the water and the oil. This is hydrophilic 
And this is hydrophobic, which means it is afraid of water. It doesn't want to mix. Viruses and bacteria tend to be hydrophobic. They don't want to mix with water. So if you wash your hands with only water, they'll stay on your skin and won't come off. Also, the coating around them that protects those viruses doesn't break down well unless you use soap, something that mixes the two together. Because water and oil separate so well and water and viruses separate so well, soap is an essential part of your good hand washing. When you add soap in, it's gonna emulsify the oils and it's gonna break down those shells around the viruses. In this case, you'll be able to really see it when I shake the two together and I mix them. Now you'll get that pretty light blue, but the water and the oil will be mixed together. That's because we use soap that broke everything apart and allowed them to mix. To illustrate good hand washing, I'm gonna use a few things. One, we're gonna use some glow germ powder. This is powder that reacts in black light. That's ultraviolet light. We're gonna need a little beaker to mix it in and some hand lotion. We'll fill up our beaker just a little ways. Add the tiniest little bit of powder Give it a good mix. It's time to take our glow lotion and put it on our hands as if we just sneezed or coughed on them. So here we go. <coughs> there we go. Those germs are now on my hand from a good cough. And then if I just touch them a little bit, I'll spread them around. Or if you touch your face, this is why people say don't touch your face when you're sick. Then you spread germs around on your face and then those germs on your face can get you sick. If you touch your eyes, nose, mouth, then you could get sick. So avoid touching those areas on your face if other people are sick or if you don't wanna get sick. Now with it on my hands, there's another thing we can do. What if you pick something else up and play with it? Well, everywhere you touch, remember, you're spreading germs. So you gotta be really conscious about what things you touch without washing your hands. That's why your parents are probably telling you, wash your hands all the time. I'm gonna put a little bit more on my hands to show you good hand washing. I'm gonna get it everywhere and mix it in really well. Under black light, this really shows up. If you take away the black light, it disappears and looks like normal. You might have also heard that sanitizer isn't as good as hand washing. That's sort of true. I'll show you. This is hand sanitizer. Everywhere I touch, I'm, well, spreading germs. So I'm gonna use some hand sanitizer on my hands. Now hand sanitizer, if it's above 60% alcohol content, is supposed to be able to kill viruses. Hand sanitizer may kill all the viruses, but it leaves them really messy because it doesn't wash anything away. To show you good hand washing, we're gonna set up a station right here. I got soap and hand sanitizer, a container to wash in, and a way to get running hot water. We're gonna add the hot water here. It's important that you use hot water because hot water breaks down oils better than cold water does. Now that we're ready, we've got running hot water and soap. First off, get some water on your hands. And just using water barely washes any of that away. Running water makes it better, but it's still staying in all the cracks and crevices, especially around my nails and in between my fingers. Soap, on the other hand, and using lots of it, just like in that vase a moment ago, is gonna break down the oils or break down the viruses and mix them with the water so that it washes off even better. When you're washing your hands, you need to go at least 20 seconds. Longer is probably even better. 
To do that in your head, think of the happy birthday song. Happy birthday to you. Sing it through twice in your head. And once you're done, go a little longer for good measure. Make sure you're especially paying attention to your nails out here and washing around those and in between your fingers down in there. All right. Whew. This is why you should probably clean your counters in your bathroom too. It goes everywhere. Then wash with running water and lots of soap. If you don't do a good job or if you don't take long enough, you could still spread viruses to other people on your hands. Or you could get them from other people. Because what happens if somebody else touched that basketball that I put the viruses on? They get it on their hands and then if they ate, they would still have it in their mouth. It's important both for your health and for other people's health that you wash your hands. In your case, if you touch something that somebody else who is sick touched, you could have viruses or other things on your hands. Washing your hands properly can take away any of the germs that might make you or other people sick. Then it's much safer to touch food or even to touch your face. After you get done rinsing your hands, use paper towels or air dry them if you're in public places. If you're at home, it's probably okay to use cloth towels. By drying them, you can wipe off any remaining germs. Then you can have nice, clean hands again. That brings us to hand sanitizer. If you can't wash your hands with running water, or after you wash your hands with water and you want an extra safety precaution, this is when it might be okay to use hand sanitizer on your hands. I'm gonna leave you with this final thought from the Bible. It's really my prayer for you. It's from Romans 15, 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Remember, we serve a living God and he'll take care of us. This has been a bonus lab for Science Foundations. To get access to all of our labs, join me at awesomesci.tv.com. I hope to see you there.